Maptitude mapping software is designed to complement all of the work you do in Microsoft Excel. Maptitude can read and write Excel files so that you can easily perform geographic analysis on your spreadsheet data and use your results in either platform. This tutorial will show you a number of ways that you can use Maptitude with Excel and unleash new analysis possibilities impossible with a spreadsheet alone. For example, here I have an Excel workbook that contains a worksheet with customer data that includes addresses and sales volume, and a second worksheet with the addresses of my stores. Maptitude makes it easy to map my data in several ways. The first thing I will do is click the New File button to launch the Maptitude Create a Map Wizard. Create a Map Wizard gives you start to finish assistance in creating a general purpose map or a map of your data. The first thing to do is to browse for the Excel file that contains the data. And I'm going to work with the customer worksheet first and click Next. Maptitude shows you the fields in your data that it found for mapping. You can verify and change the fields if necessary, but in this case they are correct, so I'll again click Next. And now choose how to use your data in the map. First, let's make a map that shows the postal codes with the data attached. And choose a type of theme. In this case, let's create a color theme that shows the total sales in each postal code. Maptitude examines the customer data in your Excel file, determines the total sales of the customers for each postal code, and opens a map with a color theme showing the results. Postal codes shown in dark green have the highest total sales, and postal codes shown in pale yellow have the lowest total sales. Now let's use Create a Map Wizard again, but this time let's geocode the individual customers on the map. This time I'm going to choose Map, Add Data to Map. This time I will choose the first option to locate the customers by address, zip code, or city. And notice that this box is already checked so that the customers will be added to this open map. Maptitude requires a unique ID for each customer it geocodes. Since I do not have an ID field in my customer worksheet, I'll go ahead and have Maptitude create one for me. I'll save the geocoded customer locations to a Maptitude geographic file named Customers. And I'll have Maptitude use a size theme so that the customers with higher sales are shown with larger symbols. Maptitude uses the address information in the Excel spreadsheet to place a point for every record. In this case, of the 1,341 customer records in the spreadsheet, Maptitude was able to locate 1,324 using the address and zip code. One record was located using the address and nearby zip code, because perhaps it had no zip code or an incorrect one, and 16 records could only be located at approximate locations within the appropriate zip code, perhaps because these addresses were post office boxes or were missing street address information. When I click OK, Maptitude redraws the map with the geocoded customers, scaled to show their volume of sales. These symbols are a little large for this scale map, so I'm going to click the Size Theme button and reduce the sizes for the low and high values. Now I'm going to repeat the steps to geocode the stores that were on the second worksheet in the Excel file. This time we'll use the Stores worksheet. And again, I'll add the stores to the existing map. Maptitude adds the two store locations to a new layer on the map and zooms to show the locations. I will click the store symbol here in the Display Manager so that I can change the style from the default and differentiate the stores from the customers. I'll change the symbol the size, and the color. And finally, I'm going to click the Previous Scale button here to see all of the customers again. I have now used the data in the Excel file to show which zip codes have the highest sales, where all of the customers are, and what their sales are, and where the stores are located. Now I can use Maptitude to perform some geographic analysis of my customers and get the results back into Excel. First, I want to find exactly which of my customers are within 5 miles of one of the stores 
and create a new Excel spreadsheet of just those customers. First, I'm going to make sure to display the drawing tools, and I'm going to use the radius tool and click on the map at one of the store locations. I'll enter 5 in the radius box and click OK. Mathitude draws a circle with a 5 mile radius on the map. Now if I right click on it and choose export to Excel, I can create a new Excel file of just the customers within that 5 mile circle. When I scroll down, you can see that there are 142 customers within 5 miles of the store I chose. This next worksheet shows the stores within that circle. In this case, just store number 1 is in it. And this next worksheet is data from the color theme of sales on zip code. Any zip code that is at least partially within that circle is listed in the first column, and the sales for those zip codes is shown in the second column. Finally, Mapdude also computes some demographic data for the area that I drew. For example, here's the estimated household income for the households within 5 miles of that store. And here is the estimated population. The next analysis that I'm going to do in Mapdude is to determine which store is closest to each customer and how far away that store is. I'm going to open a Maptitude data view of the customer layer. And I'm going to add two new fields to the layer. I'll call these fields Closest Store and Distance. And I'm going to make this Distance field a numeric field. Now if I scroll to the far right of the data view, you can see the two new fields. Highlight the closest store field, right click, and choose Fill. I'm going to use the Tag option, and choose the store layer, so as to tag each record with the name of the nearest store. Then I'll highlight the distance field, and again using the store layer, Tag it with a distance to the nearest store. Now as I scroll down, you can see that each customer record now has the name of the closest store and its distance away. I can save this data view to an Excel file now so that I can have a spreadsheet of customers that includes the information on the closest store and its distance. Simply choose File, Save As. Choose Excel Worksheet as the file type. Enter a name for the new Excel file and click Save. And if I open the worksheet, you can see that it has all the original information along with the new fields that show the longitude and latitude of each customer, the closest store, and the distance to that store. Now I have shown you how to export data to Excel by drawing a circle and by saving a data view. Now, let's suppose that I want to know about the customers near all of my stores. Rather than potentially drawing many circles, I can use the Buffer tool to compute multiple circles at once, and then export their data to Excel. First, let me remove this circle from the map by right-clicking and choosing Delete, and verify that the store layer is my working layer, and click this button to open the Buffers toolbox. I'll make 5-mile buffers, and check this box so that I compare the buffers around each store, name the buffers with the store name, and check this box to compute the demographics. Enter a name for the file that will contain the new buffer layer and click Save. Maptitude creates 5-mile buffers around all of my stores, redraws the map to include the new buffer layer, and opens a data view showing the calculated demographics. I'm going to close the data view and make the buffer layer the working layer in the map. Data from area layers that you create with Maptitude, such as buffers, can be exported to Excel by clicking the Export to Excel button.
This new Excel file created from the buffers shows you on this tab all of the customers that are within 5 miles of one of the stores. If I scroll down, you can see that 468 of my customers are within 5 miles of a store. The next tab again shows my stores, and the third tab shows the zip codes that are at least partially within 5 miles of a store. And finally, the overlay tab shows the calculated demographics. Here you can see, for example, that the income is higher around store number one, but significantly more people live around store number two. The next thing I want to do is study the customers based on driving distance to the stores. Click this button to open the Drive Time Rings toolbox. I'm going to click this button to use my two stores as the locations around which to build the Drive Time Rings, and create three rings at 10 minute intervals. And before I create the rings, I'm going to do one more thing, which is to include the customers in my ring analysis. So I'll click the Settings button, and click this button to include my customers in the demographic analysis. For each time ring, I'm going to count the features in the customer layer, and sum the sales of those customers. Now I can go back to the Drive Time Rings toolbox, and, and click this button to create the rings. Aptitude uses the drive time information for the streets to determine how far you can go from a store in 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and 30 minutes, and adds those rings to the map. I'm going to move the toolbox out of the way and hide the zip code layer so that we can better see the rings. So now you can see that the vast majority of the customers are within 30 minutes of a store. All the customers within the red center rings are within 10 minutes of a store. The customers within the next ring are 10 to 20 minutes from a store and customers within the purple outer ring are 20 to 30 minutes from a store. Next, I'm going to click this button to generate a report, which will include the demographics of the population within each ring, and will include the number of customers and volume of sales in each ring. If I scroll down, first you'll see the map, and then the demographics. For example, the median income of households within 10 minutes of a store is approximately 103,000, the population within 10 minutes is approximately 212,000, with another 843,000 people living 10 to 20 minutes from a store, and another 1.039 million people living within 20 to 30 minutes from a store. And finally, if I scroll to the bottom, you can see that there are 159 customers within 10 minutes of a store, 467 customers that are between 10 and 20 minutes from a store, and 420 customers that are 20 to 30 minutes from a store. You can export all this data for the drive time rings to Excel by choosing File, Export Document, an XLS or XLSX file. I'll go ahead and click Yes here to open the Excel file, and you can see the Excel file contains a picture of the map and all the calculated demographic and customer data for the drive time rings. Finally, I'm going to close this Excel file and all the Maptitude windows and show you one last way to use Excel data in Maptitude. When you import data into Maptitude, changes you make to the original Excel data will not be reflected in Maptitude unless you also make the change there. If you instead open your Excel file without importing it, and join it to a Maptitude layer, then changes you make to the Excel data will be reflected in the map. To illustrate this, I'm going to start by creating a general purpose map of Massachusetts, and zoom in to where most of my customers are located. Next, I'm going to open the original Customer Excel worksheet, and make sure the Import box is not checked. Maptitude displays a data view of the Excel worksheet. Notice that the fields are all green, indicating that they are read-only. I cannot edit the data, or add fields, or tag the records as I could earlier. Next, I'm going to return to the map and turn on the zip code layer. Now I'm going to join the Excel data to the zip code layer by choosing Data View, Table, Join. By matching the field that contains the zip codes in the zip code layer with the field that contains the zip codes in my data, I can aggregate my data by zip code. When I click OK here, Maptitude joins the data and displays a data view with the results. 
The joined data from the Excel workbook are shown at the far right of the data view. And for example, if I sort these by sales, you can see that these are the zip codes with the highest sales. I'm going to make the zip code layer the working layer in the map and create a color theme of the average sales by zip code. And while I'm at it, I'm going to change the colors used in the theme and click OK. Now I have a color theme showing the average sales by zip code using data directly from the Excel workbook. I'm going to zoom into here and change the zip code labels to show the total sales and the average sales. Now you can see, for example, that the zip code 01451 that contains the town of Harvard has total sales of 8400 and average sales of 2100. What I'm going to do is save this Maptitude workspace with the open map and data view. And then close all the open windows. Now I'm going to go back to the original customer workbook in Excel. I'm going to change the sales values for the customers located in that 01451 zip code and save the file. Now I'm going to go back to Maptitude and reopen the workspace. When I refresh the map, you can see that the label now shows the total sales to be 2,000 and the average to be 500 and the color of the zip code is now paler to reflect the revised average sales value. And that wraps up this video on using Maptitude with Excel.